Welcome to the Startup Sessions, the number one web show and podcast for trusting your gut, breaking the rules, and starting something meaningful. Featuring in-depth interviews with acclaimed creative entrepreneurs that have succeeded at building their own remarkable businesses. Well, we did it. We made it to episode 50, and you're in for a sweet surprise with my guest today. But first, let's take a quick look back over the past year of episodes and guests. And I challenge you to be able to hear this list and not realize that you have something within you, something you were born to do, something creative that you can turn into a successful business, a project, or an idea that expresses who you really are. So in the past year of doing these interviews and episodes, I've spoken to an engineer turned Bollywood dancer and DJ, a woman who's a journaling guide, a TV personality that lost everything and then reinvented herself, two startup incubator founders, an energy alchemist, several people that left the corporate environment to start businesses like a nonprofit, a yoga business, a music business, a food consulting company, and PR agency. I've spoken with a beer lover turned beerpreneur, a mom that went to prison and now shows others how to thrive, an ex-IT guy that now takes photos of people expressing their deepest fears, an ex-lawyer that now teaches others how to heed their call, a fifth-generation entrepreneur who helps women and minorities start businesses that matter, a travel blogger turned content marketing expert, a branding expert that lives all over the world with her family while running a six-figure business, a woman that specializes in body language and lie detection, startup founders that failed and came back stronger the second time around, a woman that wrote the book on tiny house living and simplicity, a children's book author, and the list just goes on and on. So you should all know by now that if they can do it, so can you. And today's guest is equally inspirational. He's someone that got laid off from his startup, had to take a part-time pizza delivery job and get food stamps to provide for his family, and then created his own business that generated over $150,000 in less than a year. I'm speaking with Jason Spencer today, and this discussion will be unique because it'll be more of a live case study with someone that bootstrapped their way to success because he really had no other option. And the key to Jason's success was the vulnerability that he shared with his audience. Jason's going to share the exact steps that he took to go from a part-time pizza delivery job to creating a $150,000 a year business in less than a year. So I'm so excited to feature this discussion, if you couldn't tell because it's such a great example of what it looks like to leverage what you have and build something remarkable in a short period of time. If you have any doubts about your ability to succeed as an entrepreneur in a genuine and heartfelt way, today's discussion will change that, I guarantee you. Also, I've done something a little different with the show notes this week. I've taken all of Jason's steps and I've broken them down for you in an easy to understand sequence So to be sure and go to the startupsessions.com slash 50 for the show notes and the exact sequence of steps that Jason took to create this business. And now on to today's episode, episode number 50 of the Startup Sessions. Hello, everyone. I am so excited about my guest today. I have Jason Spencer with me here from Asheville, North Carolina. Welcome to the show, Jason. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, it's, it's super great to have you here. I was just speaking with Jason before we hit the record button, and uh, I came in touch with Jason through a mutual friend, Tom Morcus, who works with Jason on his project, The Flight Formula, which we'll get into today. Um, But first, let's introduce Jason a little bit here. Jason's been an entrepreneur and visionary leader his entire adult life. His entrepreneurial pursuits include both offline and online work. Um, And and Jason really just has a passion for serving entrepreneurs and and aspiring entrepreneurs and empowering them with beliefs and actions and tools to to go out and succeed at what they want to do. And I really resonate with that because that overlaps with my work. And because that, what Jason does really fits me and the reasons that I do what I do as well. So 
Um, today, though, I want to try something a little bit different. Uh, Jason recently built a business from scratch, and it's it's a unique heart-centered business incubator called the Flight Formula, and I've never seen anything quite like it. So I want to I want to have Jason talk about that, but just to back up a little bit, Jason literally went from being immersed in a startup company environment that was preparing to launch that lost funding to going to a job delivering pizza to pay the bills to launching his own business that generated uh, $150,000 in less than a year. So that's a, that's a very dynamic... <laughs> Dynamic's probably a good word, right? <laughs> There's probably other words to describe the experience. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask but, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to dig into how that happened, Jason. But first of all, what I'd really love for you to do is to describe the work that you do through the flight formula because it's so unique. And I, I just really, I really um, have an appreciation for, for the process that, that you guide people through. So please let us in on like, what sh- your work there and how you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, the Flight Formula is a project that's a work in progress. It's it's something that's continuously evolving and moving forward. But in essence, what we're doing is bringing small groups of people together in what we call a tribe. And the reason we call it a tribe and not a mastermind is because we've kind of taken um, everything that's good about a mastermind, but looked at all the things that are kind of missing from a mastermind and built something that we think is is the next level beyond a mastermind. And it's all about um, intimacy and depth and connection, uh, safe space for vulnerability. And when you're able to bring people into a unique, safe environment like that, there are some absolutely magical things that can happen. And we're actually using that space not only to Um, help people discover purpose and discover the truth about who they are and what they have the capabilities to do in this life, but um, to really give them the support systems and tools that they need to be able to incubate a a sustainable business going forward. Mm. So that's that's sort of the the nutshell concept of the tribe and what we're doing at the Flight Formula. Great. That's a great uh, summary. And it's one that, uh, I, like I said, I just I've never heard of anything like it. When I think of a business incubator, I think of you know certainly the space that allows people to bring their ideas forward. But you offer something more than that so, to me, something deeper, something with more uh, meaning and heart to it. Yeah. Um, so I certainly encourage people to check out theflightformula.com to f- find more information, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that later. But um, all right, so. In 2013, you were immersed in this startup that ended up not getting funded, correct? Yes. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that experience and how it brought you to the point of starting the flight formula. Yeah, definitely. Um, So I was heavily immersed in internet marketing uh, full-time from 2008 all the way through 2013. And um, this latest venture basically was an opportunity for me to either make it really big or completely fall on my face. And um, I I basically put all my eggs in one basket. I dropped kind of everything I was doing um, with internet marketing, um, dropped all of my current clients, and I took on this opportunity because of its potential. It actually looked like kind of a a huge e-commerce platform that was poised to take on eBay and Amazon and some of the greats. And uh, things were looking really hopeful. There was all sorts of funding coming in for the project, a lot of excitement. And I was um, basically like right-hand man to the the CEO, just really helping him formulate his marketing plans and and solidify a great position for this company. And um, it was summer uh, 2013, beginning of July. I got a, a sudden phone call that I w- none of us were expecting. Um, essentially, the entire team was laid off. Uh, there was a major, major um, person funding the latter parts of the project that would get us to launch, and they, they pulled their funds. So I was, uh, you know, I, I have a family, I have two kids, a wife, and um, I'm just trying to figure out like, and I was working on kind of just a a small base salary just to get us to launch. So I didn't have like a whole lot of buffer extra money coming in. 
and it just, um, you know, it sent us through a tailspin. I was like, wow, we were so close, but it didn't pay off, and um, now we've got to figure out how, how do we survive? What do we do at this point? And it was the first time in my entrepreneurial life. I, I've built quite a few successful businesses, but it was the first time in my life where I was kind of completely unprepared, and I didn't really have anything in the works. And um, we had to go out and apply for food stamps, and I went out and got a, a part-time pizza delivery position. My wife got some part-time work, and it was just this, like, whatever it takes kind of survival mode that kind of kicked in for us that summer. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's a powerful story. It's one that <laughs> I wouldn't wish on anyone. But out of that came some clarity for you and something that's very powerful that was, that was born in the flight formula. Um, yeah. So talk about that a little bit. How did you come up with the idea for the flight formula out of that experience? Sure. So the one thing I did have kind of in my back pocket was I had been working on a blog um, that's still alive today. It's tribe.ly. I call it mm -hmm. tribely. Mm -hmm. And um, over the, from 2011 to 2013, I was just writing and kind of using it as a, as a means of expression and getting thoughts out there about heart-centered entrepreneurship and um, building tribes, bringing people together. I was, I was talking about all these ideas and I had built a, a decent sized email list um, through giving away a, a small book that I wrote called The Tribe Builders Manifesto. Okay. And so um, that was the one asset that I had always come back to as I was delivering pizza and I'm thinking, wow, I have this thing going, I've got this thing started, like what's the next step? What can I, what can I make out of this? And I'd always wanted to, to build a product and incubate um, a sustainable business out of what I started there at Tribely. Yeah. And so the initial start to Flight Formula really came out of um, actually time in the car, listening to, to some great music, looking at some great Western North Carolina scenery, and just dreaming up like, here's my tribe, here's all these people that downloaded this manifesto that are interested in heart-based entrepreneurship. What could I possibly offer them right now? And it was, it was that thought process and that state of mind that got me into incubating the flight okay. formula. Okay, great. And you moved into that process uh, fairly quickly mm -hmm. and moved forward with it. Uh, and, you know, y your revenue, I mean, that's one measurement of success that people tend to pay attention to. But you did create what many would consider a, a pretty good revenue number of, uh, of $150,000 from September to from September 2013 to August 2014. Yeah. Um, can you break that, break it down a little bit in terms of, sure. you know, walk me through the steps that you took that allowed this to happen. Yeah, definitely. So step one was, um, I, I was a student of Jeff Walker, uh, who was the creator of the product launch formula, and I, mm -hmm. I'd been studying his methodologies for a while. Okay. And I decided to basically take a Jeff Walker style email product launch uh, concept and bring it to life. And so I put together a series of emails that basically just told a bit of my story. Um, I actually talked about a different part of my story as an entrepreneur early on in my career that kind of fell flat on my face before. And, um, and I helped the audience really connect and resonate with the state of what it feels like to be completely stuck and lost and feeling like a failure. Like how do you pick up from that place and incubate something fresh, new, and exciting? How do you get yourself turned around? And so through the story that I told in this email launch, I developed a conversation with a lot of my a lot of people in the audience and got a lot of people interested in what I was talking about and then in that product launch I basically kind of turned it around and said well failure doesn't define us failure is not the end mm -hmm. we can absolutely rise up out of this and in fact there is some, there's a hidden gem within this failure that can help us see ourselves a bit more clearly that might even be putting us on a better path that will get us closer to what we're really meant to do, or what I call our purpose, or activating our gift. And, um, and so I just started like 
having these conversations and then started to invite people into, hey, I'm thinking about creating this product that brings small groups of people together that helps them work through some of this, that helps them really discover what it is they're meant to do. And then, based on all these years of experience I have building businesses, let's give them these tools that I've, I've operated within my whole life. Let's, let, let's just put it into a product. And um, so the initial beta group that got started out of that small, I think it was like five or six email sequence, was um, I had 24 applicants and 18 people committed to moving forward. So I was able to build two tribes of, uh, I think it was like nine people per tribe mm -hmm. that ended up going through the first iteration of Flight Formula. And that was my first step to income that got me, I was able to quit the pizza delivery job. It gave me enough funding at that point to at least replace that income and buy back my time so that I could focus on the product development at that point. So okay. that was step one. Okay. Got it. That's great. Um, and that's through, I'm familiar with Jeff Walker. I've not taken his, his program, but I value his, his process and the education that he's brought to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I, but I just, I love how you crafted a unique, well, your story as a connection point to reach people it through a, a series of, of emails. I mean, to me, that sounds like a pretty, uh, a pretty straightforward um, and maybe, you know, not, it is fairly simple, but not easy to, to connect with people at a very real level. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like that that yeah. struck, struck a chord with enough people to really get you, um, off and going with this flight formula. And a th the thing too, I love about it, it, you referred to it as a beta program. So mm -hmm. you were really just, you know, testing this to see yeah. how this, to see how this this program, this product would evolve over time. And also it sounds like you're still in that mode of, of creating and, and letting it evolve as it needs to. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't think I'll ever be finished evolving the product. <laughs> I, I always like to think of things in terms of continuous evolution. Yeah. But, but yeah, you're right. I think the key was, number one, be, be building my list. I was building this list all along the way while I was working yeah. on other things and okay. even during this startup opportunity. The list is key. Um, yeah. I had about 700 people when I when I did the beta launch on my list, which is okay. you know it's not a huge number of people, but it's a it's a decent number of people. Yeah. And then and then the second key, like you said, was really finding a way to to authentically and vulnerably connect mm -hmm. in a way that they could see my heart and I was able to see theirs. Mm. I love it. That's powerful. All right, so. Moving forward, then you you had two groups of of nine people, so a total of eighteen people um, commit by application to joining this. So you made sure that there was a good match both ways, right? Yes, right. Okay, yeah. got it. And then, um, how long would you say that process was from launching those that series of emails to actually solidifying those two groups of people? Uh, it was about a three or four week period of okay. selecting who was going to be in and um, just me preparing materials and so forth. I had a general construction of an outline for the course. I knew what I wanted to get into, mm -hmm. but I, I had to refine a lot of the details. Yeah. And um, the thing was I, I created a six-month program on purpose because I knew that, okay, if I start it here in September and it doesn't end until like March, then I've got time this this during these six months to be building this product. So the whole got time it. that I'm teaching and coaching and delivering the product, I'm also building at the yeah. same time. Okay, great. And that's a huge, huge, huge point because um, myself included often fall back into the mode of I need to create something and have it done and and do all that before I can launch it to the world. And Yep. There's several things inherently wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're not getting the feedback from people as you go along to help you really create things that they want. That I mean, that's one thing. And, you know, you can really create something so much sooner, I think, than we think we can um, by doing it that way. So I love that. I love that that's your, the approach that you took and that you were able to really, in, in you know, three or four weeks, launch something that people were wanting, connect with them, and get a commitment from 18 people that 
sound like they were a really good fit for what you had to offer. Yeah, and you know what? The real-time feedback that you mentioned, I, there's no value that can be put on that. It's so valuable. It's it's just incredible because you're right. The product changed. Like I had, I had a roadmap. I've had a plan. But as I started coaching people and working with them, I realized, wait a second, we need to be spending more time here. We need to be going this direction here. And your, your audience or your customers will help to define some of your next steps and, and ultimately define your product. So yeah. there's no sense like spending months or even years building out a grand scheme and a product that who knows if, if your customers are going to like it. Yeah. Okay. That's big. That's huge, I think, for, for so many people. You don't have to be get it perfect and create it all up front. Allow the people that are resonating with you to help you create the thing that yes. that you're in the process of creating. That's mm, right. So good. All right. Okay. Um, any other steps that you took along the way? So beyond the so you got the product the or the program launched. Um, you engaged people in it. What was the was this a an online with a, uh, what do I want to call it? I think people, if I remember right, I was looking at some of the details, people showed up in person for parts of this, correct? Yeah, that was the, uh, actually, well, during the beta group, it was six months online through Google Hangouts, and we did okay. one um, one short weekend, um, I think it was three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. where not everybody was able to make it because it wasn't... Um, uh, wasn't really sold as kind of a centerpiece of the product. It was just kind of a, a gathering kind of thing. So we did a small event for the beta groups. But um, the event that you saw details about online was actually through the second iteration of the flight formula. Okay, got um, it. That was, um, <clears throat> so while I was delivering the beta, I, I um, worked uh, to find actually a couple of partners that, that could help me really kind of take this thing to the next level. One of which was Tom Morcus that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Another was Asher Lee, who was a, uh, a local life coach, spiritual life coach here in Asheville. Okay. And I, I teamed up with these two um, in uh, late 2013 with the hopes of kind of scaling this up and taking it to the next level in 2014. And so um, we did that launch and had a seven-day live retreat experience, um, basically taking the six months worth of um, curriculum and material and, and really uh, kind of converging it into a very intensive uh, seven days live, which was one of the most life-changing experiences, not just for the, the participants, but for me and the, the people involved. So it, it was awesome. Mm. Okay, so that was cool. the second flight formula iteration. Okay, and which which iteration are you on currently? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually still wrapping that one up because we uh, we not only did the seven days, but we did six months worth of follow up with them. Okay, okay. and then I'm uh, we're working with a, a strictly online tribe, which is okay. which was our third iteration. Right after the live event, we did another launch for people that weren't able to. Um, to travel, but they still wanted to experience the flight formula, so we did okay. a uh, just an online experience. Got it. Okay, so I love this because you're you are you know you're creating different variations of this experience based on different yeah. needs of people along the way, and so people right. are getting access to this you know this powerful information that you're providing in in new and innovative ways, and you're getting to test and create as you go along different ways of delivering the content. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, well, one of the one of the things you've got to you've got to do as an entrepreneur is be fast on your feet and be flexible and 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 be open to what your customers are telling you cuz one yeah. of the things we learned while we were launching this live event, the second iteration was we were getting emails from all these people that said this looks awesome, we want to participate. Unfortunately, I'm not able to travel at this time or that's just those dates don't work for me. What's next? And they mm -hmm. wanted a way to get involved. So, you know, we weren't planning this originally, but we thought, why not, like, accommodate all of these needs, and we'll just launch yeah. an online version right after the live one. Yeah. So that was an opportunity for us that we were able to, uh, to take advantage of. Cool. So, again, you're listening to what people want based on, like, real needs. Like, people are literally telling you <laughs> the next steps to take. 
Yeah, it's pretty... listen, listening is such such a quality skill, and it really pays <laughs> off. I <laughs> uh, love it. All right, great. All right, so looking back on your experience with these different iterations of the flight formula, what were some of the main keys to uh, creating something extraordinary like this? I think when I looked to build the flight formula, one of the things I asked myself was, what what are the things that seem to be missing out there mm-hmm. in online entrepreneur programs, courses, masterminds? What what's missing? And for me, the number number one and number two things had to do with accessibility and connection to the person offering the, the material. And number two, the ability to truly connect. Um, not just in a superficial exchange business cards kind of way, but truly know the people that you're going through this with. Um, you know, the, e- even like you know the courses I've mentioned before, some of the things that I've been influenced by. There's there's holes. Like you, you'll get involved in a program and you'll feel like, wow, I have questions or I want to know how I can apply this better in my business, and there's just very little opportunity for you to to develop relationships where you can get that kind of support and even accountability that you need to put it into to action. So that w- that was like to me an essential part of what we would do moving forward is is to create that space where there's not only tight knit close relationships that that participants experience together mm-hmm. but that they would have direct um and uh, accessibility to coaches and the people that are delivering the material. Okay. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, anything else? Anything else that were that you considered main keys to creating something really extraordinary for people? Yeah. I'll, you know what? We should dive into um, the other like main thing that Flight Formula is all about, which is okay. It's Brene Brown's favorite word, and it's it's becoming one of my favorite words, and it's vulnerability. Mm. You know what? Um, I think the most powerful moment of 2014 for me was sitting around the tribe in a circle at the live event and listening to what we did was we had one person on a hot seat and they weren't allowed to talk. They had to be completely silent. The rest of the tribe had spent three or four days leading up to this point getting to know this person, learning about them. Um, you know, becoming friends, becoming close, and really getting to to understand their heart and their story. And so we get to this moment where this person's on the hot seat, they're silent, and every person around the tribe takes a turn saying exactly what is true about that person. Why is this person beautiful? What's the most beautiful part about this person? What is the most powerful thing that this person possesses within them? that they might not even realize. We were essentially naming these people's gifts one by one, and the tears would flow, and people would just embrace each other. And it was such amazing breakthrough um, tribal experience that um, I I have to say, like, one one of the most amazing things that happens in the flight formula is that it's okay for us to cry together. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for us to like truly get into each other's hearts, like yeah. where does that happen in an internet marketing course <laughs> online? Where does it happen in a business incubation program? Yeah, like that's that's powerful stuff, man. It's it's like yeah. the stuff that people can take and remember and know that this is the truth of who I am, and no matter what kind of negative feedback loops are going on inside my head, mm-hmm. whatever my brain is kind of become used to over the years that's no longer valid like it it can't it can't hold a light to what just happened here yeah wow that's powerful thank you for sharing that that's certainly yeah. something that's certainly something that i've never heard of as part of any <laughs> any business incubation or <laughs> <laughs> business training course or anything like that so yeah and that's part of the uniqueness that you bring and what Definitely. makes what, what you do extraordinary. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, were there any major mindset shifts that you made during this time where you were creating this course and through the different variations of it that you noticed for yourself? Yeah, you know what? I think I think the biggest mindset shift that I've I've had to wrestle through through this entire experience has been I need other people mm. that I can't I can't be like a, a solopreneur superhero do it myself kind of guy. I will melt. I will fail. I will fall flat on my face. I need the gift of others to really allow my own gift to come alive. And so collaboration um, has been such a, such a key experience for me over these last couple of years. Okay, great. All right. What, um, what would you say is the biggest, uh, the biggest lesson that you've learned over the course of the last 12 months as an entrepreneur? Hmm. Biggest lesson. I, I, yeah. I, I think I think that lesson's the same. I think um, I think I've always tried to to be the guy that can just carry the weight of the world on his shoulders, and mm -hmm. it just gets lonely and it gets hard. And um, I don't I don't think a lot of people are really wired to really thrive that way. Mm -hmm. And even though some people might appear like they are, I, I just I wonder like. Are, are there teams actually supporting them behind the scenes that you don't really see? Are there, are there masterminds or groups that they're leaning into? But yeah. I think the biggest lesson was that I, I can't be a lone ranger. Yeah. That's a powerful lesson. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm <laughs> certain that um, I think many people that are successful and may appear to be successful on their own terms that they do have a strong network and a strong team that yeah. support them to help Definitely. them achieve the great things that they do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well said. All right, Jason, before we go into uh, the lightning round of questions, if you could offer one piece of advice for aspiring entrepreneurs out there, what would that be? Be real, um, be true to who you are. Um, and seek out, like truly seek out your gift. And the way, the way I recommend seeking that out is we all have stories. We all have like these really painful spots in our backstory, these really difficult things that we've had to overcome that we like to kind of just stuff under the carpet and move on. Like that's mm -hmm. in the past. We need to move forward. But I think there are some really, really important and valuable gems within those moments of our story, within those tough parts, within those um, pl places that we've had to learn to either overcome or adapt, contains this gift that we can offer to other people that are actually going through that in their own life. And when we can come to grips with the fact that there's power back there in that pain, and I don't know if, um, if you're aware of this, but the word passion, the English word passion, comes from a, a root that actually means pain. And so when we can learn to develop a passion um, for the things that are hurting other people in the same way they hurt us, that's a gift and something that we can create unbelievable movements and businesses and heart-centered, meaningful things in our lives with. So yeah. I would say, like, don't stray, stray away from or, or stuff this stuff under the carpet. Like, go back there and work through it and understand the valuable gift that's in there. Mm. Yeah, that's so, that's so well put. And I know that when I hear someone speak from their heart and I, I hear that they're, being, they're sharing uh, something very meaningful that came from a vulnerable place, like that's a strong connection point for me. Yeah. That's a strong, strong connection point for me. So I struggle with the vulnerability piece myself. <laughs> I try to, you know, I experiment with it. And, I, and anytime I have, um, people have, have resonated with it. Yeah. Uh, so and it's not, it's, it's not totally culturally embraced yet. So it does feel, oh, totally. it feels weird. And, and we kind of like, 
um, back down at times. Uh-huh. But I, I think those of us who are willing to step forward into that yeah. are, are, are the leaders of the, of the future, are the people that are going to create really, truly meaningful work in the world that will change yeah. lives. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, Jason. And you mentioned Brene Brown with her vulnerability work. Yeah. And that's, I think there's a reason that, that that work has taken off for her. Yes. I mean, as crazy, it's just, awesome. it's, her stuff has just been embraced um, in such a big way. And I love, yes. I love that it has, and it seems to be spilling out into, into uh, business organizations and social organizations, and I love it. Definitely. Love it. She's, she's been a huge influence of mine, so I totally yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Well, let's jump into the lightning round of questions. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. If you had to choose a most influential book in your life, what would it be? I would say The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Uh, Back in 2011, right before a lot of things were were really uh, happening in my life, like moving to Asheville and and incubating new business, um, that book came into my life and it was very, very influential and meaningful to me at that time. Okay. Still is. Great. What's your favorite a business superpower? That sweet spot where you really shine? Yeah, it's uh, bringing small groups of people together so that they, they can have a safe, vulnerable, and highly connected environment so that they can be more real and more themselves so that they can tap into their personal power and gift. So it's right. building, building tribes. Yeah. I love your clarity on that. All right. How about the most, distra- uh, the most effective strategy for growing your business? Authenticity and vulnerability. Just being okay. real with who I am and mm-hmm. showing up with all of my gifts out loud. <laughs> Nothing to hide. Got it. Love it. Favorite business tool or resource? Tribes, <laughs> small groups of people. <laughs> I know I sound like a broken record, but there's a recurring I've, theme. I've got to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's effective. Okay, all right. Um, how about this? This is my favorite question because okay. I, I love adventure and and it's a big part of like what really keeps me going. Uh, every day, and I, tr- I try to bring it into these interviews with this question. What's the most recent exciting adventure that you've had or taken part in? Yeah, so, well, first of all, I live in an area where daily adventure is possible. Asheville yeah. is just so amazing in terms of um, natural beauty and mountains. So, my family and I, we do a lot of hiking and enjoy the scenery and great drives around here, waterfalls, etc. But I think the most interesting adventure as of late was like we escaped the mountains for a weekend just a month ago and headed to Charleston. And uh, I don't know if if, um, the parents out there have ever experienced this, but we get to the hotel room, and the minute we get into the hotel room, my wife gets terribly sick. And so the whole weekend, she's basically laid out in the hotel room, (sighs) sick as a dog, and I'm there trying to be Mr. Mom with the kids heading out on various escapades and getting food and <laughs> taking care of mom all at the same time. But I think, um, I think what I was amazed by out there in Charleston was we took these little water taxis, and every time we got in a, a water taxi, there would be dolphins surrounding the boat, all these dolphins coming up and down. Oh, wow. It was, it was awesome, even though my wife didn't get to enjoy it and experience it. <laughs> It was, it was a great adventure with the kids. <laughs> so it's an event, it was an adventure in more ways than one. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Got it. Love it. Cool. All right, Jason, tell us what you're most excited about in your business right now. Okay, so this is kind of top secret. I haven't really told anybody this yet, but yeah. there's, a, um, there's something really fascinating going on in the software development world. You may have heard of it. It's called Scrum, S-C-R-U-M, and Agile Systems. And essentially, it's the art of doing twice as much in half the time. Um, It's exponentially uh, creating opportunities for teams to be more productive and um, with with less resources and time. 
Okay. So we're working on ways right now to basically integrate these principles that exist in the software world, Scrum and Agile principles, and we're looking to basically bring teams of people together that are not solopreneurs, that are looking to just fly and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. We're looking to build s small groups of people in tribes, just like I described before, but mm -hmm. using Scrum Agile to actually co-create and collaborate something together so okay. that they'll actually be building a business as a team rather than as solopreneurs. Oh, wow. So that's, that's going to be the next iteration of Flight Formula that we're going to be talking about and unveiling for, for 2015. Great. That sounds exciting. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. Um, and if people want to find out more about that, um, what's the best place for them to go and you know, put their email in so that they can make sure to hear about that? Yeah, there's, there's two places you can go. Uh, okay. At Tribely, tribe.ly, you okay. can download my ebook. I still have the Tribe Builders Manifesto up there for download. And okay. you'll, get, you'll get all kinds of news um, re related to Flight Formula from there. Or you can go directly to theflightformula.com and okay. register for our list there. And we'll notify you when new things are happening. Fantastic. Great. And I'm also going to have all these links included in the show notes for episode 50 at thestartupsessions.com slash 50. Awesome. Super easy for people. And all congratulations right. on the 50th episode. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank Huge you monster. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. hard to believe that, that uh, you're the 50th guest and it's gone <laughs> so fast and it's been, I just am so inspired by the people that I get to speak with. Um, it's, it's one of the favorite parts about the work that I do. So That's great. Thank, so thank you for being the 50th. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate thank you it. Thank for having me. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, thank you so much. Um, this has been truly a unique interview. Um, you certainly have a unique approach to helping people incubate their businesses. And I just encourage anyone that's looking for a more heart-centered approach to business to check out Jason's work. And especially like the latest stuff that you're doing, that's fascinating. I, I'm, I want to hear more about that. So thanks, thanks again, Jason. Yeah, thank you, Michael. It's been great. Yeah. All right. We will uh, talk to you all on another new episode of the Startup Sessions next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I don't know about you, but I found this interview to be incredibly inspirational while delivering a powerful example of how to bootstrap a business with heart connection, authenticity, and vulnerability. I challenge you to consider what resources that you have that can be leveraged right now. Who do you know? What could you teach? How could you help people? And what experience can you draw from to provide value in a meaningful way? And I hope you took away the power of connecting with others and listening to what they really want. Because once you do this, you can offer people a solution with heart. And don't make it too complicated. Keep it simple and focus on making that connection with others. Also, if you're looking to create a new business or make your current one better, look for gaps in other products and services. Or better yet, ask people who've experienced similar products or services about what they liked best and what they liked least. Because there's always opportunity for adding more value and creating something unique. And finally, don't be afraid to connect with people in an honest and vulnerable way. This is the quickest path to developing a truly remarkable connection with your customers. I want to thank Jason for sharing so openly and honestly in today's episode, because it's not every day that someone really opens up in the spirit of serving others in such a heartfelt way. Also, be sure to check out the show notes this week. I've taken all of Jason's steps and I've broken them down in an easy-to-understand sequence so that you can have something tangible to take away from this episode. And you can follow along or you can print it out if you like as well. Just go to thestartupsessions.com slash 50. Thanks for listening. Have an amazing week and live bravely. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to head on over to thestartupsessions.com for a full recap of all our episodes, including links to amazing resources for each guest, thoughtful and provoking blog articles, and many other great resources. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And if today's guest can create a meaningful business, 
and achieve a life of freedom through a business with soul, why can't you?